Season 6, Episode 13 of The Curse of Oak Island begins at Smith's Cove, where a mysterious concrete wall was discovered at the end of the previous episode next to the suspected slipway. Using his trowel, archaeologist Laird Niven uncovers two rubbery pipes protruding from the wall's base, which seem to indicate that the structure was made by 19th or 20th century searchers and not by the original builders as was initially hoped. Later, at the Money Pit area, the team lifts and lowers the H8 caisson using the oscillator, causing 24 feet of muck to collect at the bottom of the shaft. That accomplished, they remove the mud and debris from the hammer grab and transfer the spoils to a wash table, where the debris is manually inspected. Jack Begley, Charles Barkhouse, and Dan Henske discover a number of interesting artifacts in the spoils pile, including fragments of wood, leather, and parchment. Upon close inspection, one of the parchment fragments appears to bear markings rendered in red and yellow paint or ink. Doug Crawl suggests that the markings might be the remains of a stylized initial, or drop cap, of the type used in illuminated manuscripts of the Middle Ages. Another interesting item discovered in the H8 spoils is a fragment of what appears to be human bone, evocative of the late 17th or early 18th century human bones extracted from H8 in Season 5, Episode 5. About halfway through the episode, the crew is visited by Randall Sullivan, the journalist who has been tasked with writing a History Channel-sponsored book on the Oak Island treasure hunt. Sullivan remarks that he is partial to the theory that Elizabethan and Jacobean English polymyth Sir Francis Bacon is the man behind the Oak Island mystery. As evidence to support his theory, he cites a passage from Bacon's natural history book Silva Silvrum, which instructs the reader to dig a pit on the seashore starting above the high water mark, to a point below sea level. The implication is that Bacon was describing the construction of the money pit. A closer look at this passage reveals it as a description of a supposed method for straining salt water in order to produce fresh water. The first sentence of the passage reads, Dig a pit upon the seashore, somewhat above the high water mark, and sink it as deep as the low water mark, and as the tide cometh in, it will fill with water fresh and potable. Bacon goes on to explain that this method of water purification saved Julius Caesar and his Roman army from thirst during the siege of Alexandria in 47 BC. Later, Randall Sullivan expresses his belief in the South Shore Cove flood tunnel, a supposed original working, the existence of which Oak Island treasure hunters have debated for over a century. In 1897, the Oak Island Treasure Company poured red dye into the money pit in order to locate the head of the Smith's Cove flood tunnel. The dye soon appeared on the shores of Smith's Cove. However, in an unexpected turn of events, the dye also showed up at several locations on Oak Island's South Shore Cove. This discovery led the Oak Island Treasure Company to believe that another flood tunnel connected the waters of the South Shore Cove with the money pit. 83 years later, in February 1980, Dan Blankenship observed four circular holes in the ice about 700 feet off the South Shore Cove, each of them spaced about 150 feet apart. Blankenship and his business partner David Tobias both consider these holes to be another piece of evidence supporting the existence of the South Shore flood tunnel, suspecting that they indicated the termini of the supposed South Shore Cove box drains. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about Season 6, Episode 13 of The Curse of Oak Island, please check out the link in the description.